gang, what's up? Just Aaron right here at Question Period Canada. Excited to bring you the highlights of everything that happened in Canadian federal politics this week. Very exciting. From the Senate, all the speeches, from the Commons, all the questions in Question Periods, the non-answers. We're going to jump right into it. Let's check it out. Let's get this straight. It's a company with four employees headquartered in the basement of a tiny cottage. They got IT contracts even though they admit they do no IT wow. work. A quarter of a billion dollars, WTF. We are dangerously close uh, to crossing the line uh, in terms of what is considered parliamentary language. Shocking news that the two-person uh, firm, Justin Trudeau's favorite uh, two-person uh, firm um, being used by the government for IT work that has done no actual IT work has been paid a, a quarter of a billion dollars, $250 million in contracts uh, from the government to this two-person firm while Canadians are lined up at food banks in, in record numbers and Canadians are struggling just to feed themselves and keep the heat on. Vote for me and life will suck. I think that's what he just said. He has signed on with the NDP government in BC to decriminalize crack, heroin and other hard drugs. And it goes even deeper. The Liberals gave $250 million to GC Strategies. Well, let's talk about what that $60 million for Arrive Can could have bought. 125 affordable homes. 800 nurses hired. Instead, this Prime Minister spent this money on an app that doesn't work and no one uses. During the pandemic, Canadians' lives were at risk and we, quite rightly as a government, uh, reached out to all the possible tools to keep Canadians safe and indeed, the pandemic was less deadly and less harmful to our economy in Canada than it was in most, if not all, of our peer countries. But leaders question. The question was, how can the Prime Minister waste millions of dollars on a Rive scam when Canadians can't afford to eat, heat or house themselves? The answer is because the NDP keeps that Prime That's Minister right. in power. That's right. It cost 80 grand, said the Prime Minister. Now it's at least 60 million, but we don't know for sure because of missing documents. What is the full and final cost of a Rive scam. I will highlight that part of the uh, Conservatives' attacks uh, on this situation uh, is because they deeply deplore all the measures we put in to keep Canadians safe during the pandemic. What was the full and final cost of the app? That is among the questions that there are direct follow-ups, uh, investigations ongoing right now, both internal and external. Combien? that uh, anyone who broke the rules faces consequences, that systems and structures uh, surrounding the public service and procurement uh, are changed. Uh, this is something we are taking very seriously, as we must. GC Strategies, almost half of the 140 contracts it's gotten for IT work since 2015. We learned that 46 of those contracts went to GC Strategies without a call for tender. The Rive Scam app would cost taxpayers $80,000, but in fact, it's 750 times more, over $60 million in climbing. Now, committees studying this scam have heard evidence of forgery, fraud, obstruction of justice, and breach of trust by government officials. The Arrive Scam is just like the Prime Minister, not worth the cost, not worth the corruption. Crazy carbon tax minister has done it again. This time, he's saying that the federal government is not going to support any new road construction. I quote, our government has made the decision to stop investing in new road infrastructure. Wow. End quote. So he believes that people in Yukon or rural Alberta or rural Newfoundland will have to get to work riding a bicycle using certain adjectives in regards to particular members of parliament, to individual members of parliament. Uh, so like the word uh, crazy is not a word that we should be using in this. And that's one of the things which I had been given uh, direction to members. So I'm going to ask. My Roads in this country will no longer uh, allow that to be part of the federal infrastructure program. I believe that would be the first government anywhere at any time that has ever said they're not going to build roads for the people who need them. We need our roads uh, to get our goods from our farmers to uh, market. We need our roads to get 
our kids to school. We need our roads to get our workers to work. And this is a government that's already taxed away the ability of people to afford to buy a new car. And now they're saying that they're going to take away uh, road uh, to building roads in this country, I think it's an extreme position. The medical minister made it very clear that this Liberal government will no longer allow funding to go towards building roads. And it's no surprise that a guy that scaled the CN Tower or climbed on top of a Premier's roof would come up with an extreme policy like building no more roads in this country. I would like to read a quote to you from Glenn White, who was the former Vice President of National Farmers Union. And I quote, Farmers will be among the hardest hit if we don't to slash greenhouse gas emissions and stabilize the climate. For this reason, to protect farmers, the NFU supports pollution pricing, Mr. Speaker. It is an important policy tool to reduce the harmful emission fueling the climate crisis and threatening farms and food supplies. For his Arrive Can app, but he still wants to quadruple the carbon tax on gas, groceries, and Dang. home eating. Mr. Speaker, you want to deny climate change? Mr. Speaker, let's focus are actually getting back. He's right to point out that for several decades, uh, governments, both Liberal and Conservative, failed to invest in affordable housing. Fine, here, here. $60 million for his Arrive Cam app, but he needs to quadruple the carbon tax on farmers and food. Yeah. We are yeah. hearing the pleas from Canadian families who want to axe the tax to make food affordable. I was in Sudbury this week meeting with food banks who are at a breaking point yeah. as demand has doubled and is rising. There's a common sense conservative bill, 234, which will give a carbon tax carve out for farmers and lower the price of food. Mm -hmm. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Mr. Speaker, I'm glad the Conservatives are finally asking a question about the economy. Question, and I'm being a farmer on Canada Agriculture Day and being part of a government that has an environmental plan, it makes me very proud. For to the residents of Quinney West who have just lost their jobs. Let's give a real reality look at what's happening in Canada right now. Over the last Last four months, TD has slashed 3,000 jobs. Canadian Tire has slashed 3% of its workforce. Enbridge has slashed 650 jobs. Rona has slashed 300 jobs. Manulife slashed 250 jobs. After eight years of this high spending Liberal NDP government, the only job Canadians want to see slashed is that Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it's not worth the cost of the suffering he's causing. The Payne family operates Asphodel Sheet Company. They were recognized as Farm Family of the Year in Peterborough yeah, County. Yeah, yeah. Now, the carbon tax is set to increase 23% on April 1st, and it is truly hurting them. The kids don't know what's going to happen to their family farm. So Katie, who's 15, Jolene, who's 13, and Lucy, who's 9, asked me to ask the Prime Minister this. Why is the Canadian government making it so difficult for the agriculture industry to do their job of feeding the country? We are worried about the climate crisis, and we know that coal is the dirtiest source of electricity, producing more emissions than any other fossil fuel. The Liberals promised to ban thermal coal exports, but under the Liberals, exports have more than tripled. More broken promises. They have no plan to phase it out, no plan to support workers, as Canadians across the country are facing extreme weather, will the Prime Minister end thermal coal exports? Here, here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, yes. Phasing out coal from the electricity sector is the single most important climate action any country can take. We're committed to ending thermal coal exports by 2030, along with an end to coal-powered electricity generation. The Minister of the Environment is actively working on achieving these car targets, and we'll have an update in due course. The Honourable Member for Richemont, Arthabasca. Mr. Speaker, after question period, all MPs will have the opportunity to vote on Bill C-273 Bill C to repeal Section 43 of the Criminal Code, which allows an adult to use corporal punishment on a child for supposedly educational purposes. Over 65 countries around the world have taken this step, and 27 are in the process of doing so. The UN Committee for the Protection of Children has asked for this. The Call to action number six of the Truth and Reconciliation Com Commission calls for this, and so does the Canadian Medical Association. Can the Prime Minister confirm that his government will support this initiative in order to protect our children? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I thank my Honourable Colleague for his question. This matter is important to all of us, and I would like to reassure everyone that our government is committed to protecting children and their physical safety. 
all children everywhere in Canada. Thus, we will support C273 and its goal to protect children from violence and abuse. We look forward to hearing experts speak about this matter in committee. This legislation is very important, and in a few moments, we will support it. By NDP Shit. radical activists telling them to go back where they came from, will the Prime Minister reject this liberal racism and ban hard drugs so we can stop the crime? Yeah. Let me quote what he said about life in Canada after eight years of his Prime Ministership, and I quote, yeah, grocery bills suck. Rent sucks. Mortgage re renegotiations. Oh my God, how are we going to deal with it? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this is life after eight years. What is his slogan going to be in the next election? Vote for me and life will still suck? Yeah. <laughs> Did he just say, vote for me and life will suck? I think no. that's what he just said. Uh, the reality is. So Canadian politics are wild and woolly. Polyev, is he going to be our guy? Trudeau does have to go. These liberals, this NDP coalition government, they need to go, big time. We need an election, guys. Everybody knows that. We've been watching politics now for six months every day, doing this all the time. We cover the live broadcasts of the question periods daily, like while that's happening. So you can check that out if you're interested in Canadian politics. We're learning here and sharing that with you. I'm just a voter. Like, I don't agree with the system that we have or whatever, but we have this system, so that's what we've got to deal with. And we've got to learn, like, how to use it to our best advantage. Like and subscribe. My name is Aaron. This is Question Period Canada. And boy, oh boy, do we have a lot of questions. Try to stay warm. Have something healthy to eat. We'll catch you next video. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.